Hi there, and welcome to today's Practical Planning Tip by Park Bridge Wealth Management. My name is Jonathan Shankman. I'm the President and Chief Investment Officer of the firm. Today, we're going to continue our discussion on why the most important financial decision most people make is who they decide to marry. And I know that Purim is over, but my youngest daughter, Mary, allowed me to borrow her dog, her part of her dog costume for this video. And I explained to her that people like doggies and will be more inclined to like and share my content if I wear this doggy hat. And she generously allowed me to borrow this hat for this video. So thank you, Mary. Anyway, today we will focus on money expectations. So some people are delusional about their finances. And you should avoid these people or spend the time to educate them. I met with couples with a primary breadwinner earning a decent salary and a second spouse either unemployed, working part-time, or at a low-paying job. That spouse still envisioned a life of luxury, vacations, and living in a large home in a nicer part of town. <clears throat> and I share this dose of reality with them. You don't get a pass on math. If you do not have a high household income, you cannot live an extravagant lifestyle. You need to make compromises on where and how you live. I often play the bad guy when I tell couples that they are not entitled to a five-bedroom, five-bathroom house in Teaneck, the Five Towns, or Los Angeles. You either both need to choose high-paying careers, put in extremely long hours, or make personal sacrifices to make this feasible. Spouses who don't come to terms with this reality will likely saddle their family with an insurmountable level of debt, and their financial struggles will only compound going forward. Spouses who recalibrate expectations can make the conscious decision to live within their means. This may mean buying a smaller house, choosing a less desirable part of town, not going on vacation, never eating out, wearing old clothes, etc. Making these decisions with eyes wide open leads to enjoying living a life that they can actually afford. And tomorrow I'm going to discuss a partner who's an investor or a hoarder of cash. And with that, I hope you found this practical planning tip helpful. Until next time, stay prudent, practical, and don't forget to plan ahead.